Okay, so I wanna show you guys how we make our homemade crusty bread. It is so good. Um, we had found a recipe online a while ago and tweaked it and made it our own. And this is something that is a staple in our house every week. We, uh, Marie usually makes it once or twice a week, depending on, on what we're having, and it's so good. So I'm gonna show you guys um, first what we need, then we're gonna put it together and let it set up and I'll, I'll teach you how to do it. So. First of all, for this recipe, you need to have a Dutch oven. You can see the size of my Dutch oven. Um, I think you can do it in a smaller one if you need a smaller loaf, but for this recipe, uh, you need this size Dutch oven, um, a bowl to put all your stuff in. We use organic white flour, our raw honey, Himalayan pink salt, and yeast. That's, that's all that's in this is the flour, the yeast, the honey, and the salt, and then water. It's so simple. And then just for logistics, you need parch <laughs> parchment paper and uh, plastic wrap. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first we're gonna measure out three cups of our flour. And uh, get that in our bowl first. So one. I gotta do it this way because this is how Grandma Porter did it. I don't know how you measure your flour, but um, old school Grandma Porter is you take your knife, I don't know why, to get all the flour down to the bottom, you scrape it, and then you're exact. So that's Grandma Porter style right there, and how my mom taught me too. So three cups of flour. Um, okay, we're gonna take our yeast, our instant yeast, and I'm gonna take one teaspoon, and I'm gonna put this on one side of my flour mixture, okay? And then we're gonna do our salt, which is two teaspoons. If you are watching your salts, you know, intake, you can cut that down a little bit if you need to, but we like it to have good flavor. So I'm gonna put salt on the other side here. Okay, so my yeast is on that side, my salt is on that side. If you, when you put the water in there, if they're on top of each other, you can deactivate your yeast. And then you're like, why didn't my bread rise? Well, that could be why, because you deactivated your, your yeast. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a tablespoon of honey. And honestly, we just kind of eyeball this. Don't tell Grandma Porter that I do that. Okay, and then next, I'm gonna go get some warm water. You don't want it to be hot, and you don't want it to be cold. You want it to be warm to be able to activate that yeast. Okay, so I got my cup and a half of warm, really warm water, and I'm gonna pour this in, and then we get to use all of our muscles to make uh, turn this into our dough. And uh, usually we're doing more than one loaf at a time, but today we only needed one. So usually by the end of all the stirring, you are, uh, your arm is sore. So anyway, I'm gonna get this mixed into a, a sticky dough ball. I gotta get everything mixed in. I want that yeast to get all the way through so it helps it rise into a nice loaf. But the thing about this, it's so easy. It's um, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of, you don't have to knead it all. You just have to stir it in and let it set up. It's very simple. I'll show you later, once it sets up, how easy it is, but here. Okay, so it's a very sticky dough. It's not dry, it's sticky. So once that's all incorporated, we want that dough to rise. So we're gonna cover it with some plastic wrap. And all I'm gonna do is set this in uh, the kitchen here, like on top of the stove. It doesn't have to be in a real warm spot, but not a cold spot, but I'm gonna set it on top of the stove for, you can go up to three hours. If we're in a pinch, we've done it for an hour and it still turns out, but today I have time. So I'm gonna set this and let it rise for uh, a couple hours and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. Another thing we're making today while I'm waiting for that bread to rise, that dough to rise, is some homemade vanilla extract. Um, if you have never made it at home, the difference is amazing. It tastes so good, plus you get all the benefits of having fresh vanilla beans to use in all of your baking and all of that good stuff. Plus, it's super cost effective. So if you go to the store and you buy one of those one ounce uh, bottles of pure vanilla extract, like McCormick or whatever, it's like five bucks. Um, and that's for one ounce. Today, we are gonna be making 64 ounces uh, of vanilla extract here in my in my glass jar. And between my vanilla beans and the vodka, it's under 50 bucks. 
where if I were buying this amount of extract from the store, it would be like 320 bucks. So you are saving a lot of money. Plus on top of that, if you go to Walmart and you buy one vanilla bean, it's like seven bucks. So not only are you getting all this extract, but you're getting all the use of all the vanilla beans as well. So this is how you do it. We already have one jar made up. Um, this is 64 ounces of vodka to 24, I have 25 beans in here, but 25 vanilla beans. I got my vanilla beans off of Amazon. Uh, you know, I change which brand I get. I'm not that worried about it, but I do want to get the grade A vanilla beans. You just get better quality and, and all of that stuff. Some people don't care about that. I just kind of do what's on sale and I stick with grade A. So what I'm gonna do is open up my 25 beans here and I'm gonna put them in my jar. You've got to smell them because they smell so good. Okay, put these in here. Okay, next we're going to pour the vodka in. I know it seems like a lot of vodka, <laughs> but that's just how it works. Julianne uses the vodka for um, orange extract and her fresh mint um, extract. And the thing is, is you can keep adding to this as you uh, as you use the vanilla beans, and I'll talk about that in a second, as you use the vanilla beans, you can keep on replacing this and keep on adding to your extract. So it can just keep on going. So this is all done and I just let it, you just let it sit and it, you know, it brings up, the vodka brings out all that good stuff inside of the vanilla beans. And here's a neat, neat thing I learned. So I'll let these sit for a long time until it turns a nice, beautiful, you know, amber color, the color of the of vanilla extract. But in the process, you can use the vanilla beans. So when you're ready to use a vanilla bean, let's say you're making a dessert or whatever, um, in about I don't know, like a week or two, I don't, I don't remember it being very long, these beans will get nice and soft. And so what you do is you would reach in, you would grab a vanilla bean, you would just cut off the very tip of it, and then it's soft and it creates like a paste inside of the bean. So then you will go to the other end and press out the vanilla bean paste. You can put that in any anything that would call for vanilla and it makes it amazing. Then you take that empty vanilla bean pod and you put it back in and let that continue to create your extract. So it's a wonderful thing to do at home. It's, it's delicious and uh, just a cost-effective way to make your own uh, vanilla extract. The dough has been setting up for a few hours now, so now I'm gonna do a few things. First, I'm going to turn my oven to 450 degrees, and I'm gonna put my Dutch oven in there to start warming up the pan. Um, so I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it heat up for about a half an hour at 450, and then I'll come back and prepare the bread. Okay, my oven just beeped at me, so it's telling me it's at 450, and the, the pan in the oven has been heating up uh, that whole time. So I am going to take off the lid. I am going to take the parchment and everything, so my dough and the parchment, put it in the pan, put the lid back on, nice and firm, make sure it's all set up. And it's gonna cook this way in the oven for 30 minutes, and then I'll check back in with you. The bread has been cooking for 30 minutes. My timer just went off, so this is the next step. And last step, you're gonna take this out, we're gonna um, cook it or uh, bake it without the lid and without the parchment for five to eight more minutes depending on how crispy you want it. So it looks beautiful, but it is blonde. <laughs> so we wanna make it nice and um, toasted and crispy looking. So we're gonna put it back in another few minutes and check back in. Okay, so I set my last timer for five minutes. It did, remember it, it was baking for 30 minutes with the lid and parchment. Took out the parchment, took off the lid, and did five more minutes for mine. And uh, it's all done, so let's get it out and take a look. And it looks beautiful. Here, let me show you. Okay, there's that. And then it's got the nice crunch, crunch, crunch sound. I don't know if you guys can hear it. But anyway, that's the finished product and uh, you can do two loaves at a time, one loaf at, uh, by itself, and it turns out every time that we make it. So we hope you guys can try this at home and enjoy it at your family table as well.